Good morning. This is Pastor Zach with the Goodland United Methodist Church with the morning devotion for Wednesday, May 16th. Today I'll be reading from uh, Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, but any of their possessions, but held everything in common. The apostles continued to bear powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and an abundance of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them. Those who owned properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales, and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. Joseph, whom the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, that is, one who encourages, was a Levite from Cyprus. He owned a field, sold it, brought the money, and placed it in the care and under the authority of the apostles. I want to share with you a reading uh, from The Community of the King by Howard Snyder. He writes, If Jesus Christ actually gave more time to preparing a community of disciples than to proclaiming the good news, which he did, then the contemporary church must also recognize the importance of community for proclamation. I would emphasize the priority of community in two directions, in relation to the individual believer and in relation to witness. In the first place, community is important for the individual believer. Mainline Protestantism, from its structures to its hymns and gospel songs, has emphasized the individual over the community. It has had a keen sense of the individual's, individual person's responsibility before God, but little corresponding sense of the communal life of the Christian. Too often the church has been seen more of a mere collection of saved souls than as a community of interacting personalities. Christian growth has been a matter of individual soul culture rather than the building of the community of the spirit. Saints who lived isolated, solitary lives were often placed on a pedestal above those whose lives were spent in true community. These tendencies, of course, were part of Protestantism's pre-Reformation heritage. But four biblical truths should call us back to the priority of community. One, the concept of the people of God. Two, the model of Christ with his disciples. Three, the example of the early church. And four, the explicit teachings of Jesus and the apostles. This is an important thing to think about in how we engage in Christian community and what our purposes of being in community are for. It's clear that the proclamation of the gospel is much stronger when done as a community than an individual. Our souls are better off when we are in community together, looking at our spiritual well-being as a community, rather than our individual. It's easy to isolate ourselves, spend time reading scriptures, and never leave our homes. But if we don't gather in Christian community, we miss part of the power of the gospel through the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to find a Christian community in which you can participate and grow in Christ. You're always welcome to join us at the Goodland United Methodist Church uh, for worship on Sundays at 1030. We also have different opportunities throughout the week and throughout the year for spiritual development. So you can always uh, find us at our website at goodlandumc.org to find opportunities. Have a blessed day.